Ice swimming and cold plunges have become an integrated part of societies all over the world. Swimmers, open water enthusiasts, and self-improvement advocates swear by the health benefits of taking a dip in bone-chilling waters at temperatures sometimes below freezing. Why on earth would anyone put their body through this trauma in the first place? Maybe it's a mental challenge, a daily reminder of gratitude, or a long-time bucket list experience. But whatever your reason for taking the plunge, if you do choose to dip your toes in the frigid waters, I'm gonna show you how it can be done in a way that's safe, enjoyable, and rewarding. Now, if you wanna take a dip in cold water, then there are certain things you need to be aware of. And in this video, I wanna show you the science behind how our bodies adapt to cold water, the risks associated to this wild endeavor, and a few pro tips to help you in your journey of slipping below the surface. Now, the first thing I wanna do is talk about what happens to your body. I broke it up into four different phases. The first is the cold shock response. Now, pretty much anyone watching this video, and let me know in the comments, has experienced going in the water that's really cold. Whether it's a pool, a bathtub, ice bath, cold plunge, whatever, let me know down below in the comments. But the first thing is this sudden gasp for air. It's almost like suffocating. We've all experienced this, at some, some more than others, and you feel like almost helpless if you can't get out of the water, and it takes a lot of mental control to just keep yourself in that environment. Now the risk is that if you have this sudden gasp of air and you're in water that's deeper than you can stand and you have to tread water and it's chaos, then you might inhale water and if you're gasping for air and water goes down the wrong pipe, you can think what happens. So we wanna be very careful there. Now the next thing that happens in this cold shock response is you have a rapid increase in breathing. And this can lead to hyperventilation. So you're breathing really hard, this increases your heart rate, your blood pressure goes up. If you have any cardiac problems, this is especially going to be a problem. Check with your doctor. And of course, your skin receptors are just going nuts. Your skin has no idea what's going on. Basically, your skin is telling your body that it needs to retain heat. So the heat, the blood actually leaves the vessels in your skin and basically is being pulled into the center core of your body, essentially to keep you alive. So that's the first part, that's the cold shock response. Now the next part is really, really unique and the human body is so powerful. This is adaptation. And the more you put yourself in this situation, the more you're actually going to adapt. So that's a good thing. It can also be a negative thing and I'm gonna talk about some of the risks that have happen if you get too comfortable being in the cold water. Whether you're doing a swim, an open water swim, a cold plunge, polar plunge, ice swimming, whatever, your body is going to adapt from these repeated exposures to the cold shock response. So your cold shock response is going to be desensitized over time. And this can actually lower your comfortable temperature tolerance. So you can actually get comfortable in lower and lower temperatures over time. And I have here a beautiful arrow that this repeated exposure makes the cold water exposure a non-novel experience. Basically, your body's just getting used to the cold and it's adapting both physically and mentally as well. And so over time, if you're swimming, you can actually maintain a better stroke technique in colder water because your body is just used to this activity. You can stay in the cold plunge even longer. After your body adapts, you have the after drop. So your body adapts, you're in the water, and then you get out of the water, you get out of the ice, whatever you're in, and this is the first 30 to 45 minutes after you're out of that environment. So after you swim, you get out, and you're still cold. You might be shivering, it might actually intensify because what happens is if you're in the open water and you're swimming, you're actually generating heat. So you're doing physical activity, you're swimming, you're keeping yourself afloat, you're generating heat, your skin has no idea what's going on because it's trying to sweat because you're working out, you're generating heat, but then your skin receptors are like, hold on guys, I'm freezing out here, so pull in all the heat. So this actually really confuses your body and you're trying to get to the back to homeostasis and it can take up to 30 to 45 minutes for that to actually start to happen. So depending on how long you're in that cold, you have the reheating process and that can take up to four or five hours after being out of the water. So depending on how long you're in the water, if you're in a cold plunge for two minutes, three minutes, if you're going for an open water swim of 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, 
one hour. Regardless of how long you're in there, you're going to have a reheating period. And depending on how long you're in that cold, that's going to increase the reheating period. Now there's a number of different risks that I wanna talk about, and then we'll talk about the signs of those risks and some tips for how you can overcome them. But first, I wanna thank today's video sponsor, AeroFit. AeroFit is the official breathing partner for my swim pro, and it's a tool that I've personally used over the years to improve my accessible lung capacity and even swim faster. Now it's really easy to use, and it starts with a three-step test to get your baseline, and then the app will set you up with a personalized training program. Then the workouts take less than 10 minutes a day, and all you have to do is follow the app and adjust the resistance levels on the breathing trainer. You'll see the difference in just a few weeks because the exercises strengthen your diaphragm and the muscles between your ribs so that you can inhale more air with every breath that you take. And that makes breathing more controlled and it's also gonna help you with your sleep and your recovery. So if you're ready to take your breathing to the next level, make sure you check out the link in the description and use the code MYSWIMPRO to get 15% off your AeroFit order. Now let's talk about these risks. We have hypothermia, that's probably the big one on your mind. Let's break down hypothermia and how you can get there and how you can avoid getting there. And hypothermia, you have to understand there's three phases. The first one is shivering. We've all experienced this, you're cold, you start shivering, your body's basically trying to just generate heat for itself, create like internal friction, and so we've all experienced that. Now the second phase is when it gets dangerous. This is where you can actually have a weak pulse slowed breathing, essentially your body is starting to shut down. So you haven't shut down yet, but you're transitioning from shivering and that's not working, and then your body's essentially shutting down. And then phase three is absent breathing and you can lose your pulse. So you're essentially dying at that point and we never wanna get there. So we really wanna understand when we're shivering, that's a sign if we can't control our breathing and we can't stop from shivering, we need to get out. What happens is that swimmers and those who swim in the cold water and they experience these plunges regularly, you're not actually the best judge of this happening to you. And that's why it's so important to be in a group, we'll talk about that. What can happen is you build this tolerance, this adaptation, because it's a non-novel experience and you actually are not a good judge of experiencing these problems yourself. Like you might have slurred speech and some of the other things that we're talking about and you don't even realize it and you're setting yourself up for failure. So it's really important to acknowledge that and here are some of the signs. If you're swimming, it's the claw hand. It's exactly what it sounds like. It, it, another expression is fisting. So imagine you're swimming and you go from normal hands, you're pulling good stroke, you're getting tired, you're getting colder and colder by the minute by the stroke and your hands basically just shrivel up and you start to lose motor control of your own hands. And you kind of look like, like the T-Rex arms in the, in the water. Imagine, the water is 800 times more dense than air and claw hands ain't gonna help you pull forward. So that's one of the signs that it's too cold and you need to get out. Another sign is stroke length and body position. Basically, you're getting tired, your distance per stroke is going down, and your body's just shutting down. It can't, it can't hold up anymore. You, it's tried and now it's failing. And so these are things that you might not even notice, but someone else might notice them about you. You could also have slurs in your speech. So I already mentioned this, but this is where basically you can't speak coherently. You don't even know this is happening. Another thing is the mental side starts to get delayed. So you might have a lack of recall in information. For example, if you're in the water with a group and someone asks you, hey, you look, you look pretty cold, you're not moving very fast, you got the claw hands, do you know what day of the week it is? Do you know what your brother's name is? And you might not be able to answer these questions that you should be able to know the answer immediately. So if you have a delay in recall, that means you've been in the water too long and it's time to get out. So here are a few tips if you are going for the cold plunge, the polar plunge, the ice swim, the frigid open water in the sea, swim in a group. It is so important to do this type of activity with other people for all the obvious reasons and of course, the risks and signs associated to it. Next up, you gotta have the right equipment. So now I'm really focusing on if you're swimming in the open water, in the, and maybe in a pool, you gotta have the right equipment. And that could be a wetsuit, a buoy. Of course, you're swimming in a group. They also have a thermal suit available, which is like a thicker wetsuit. They have different thicknesses of the polyurethane, anywhere from one millimeter to five millimeters. You can also get gloves and boots that are designed for cold water. 
You can also get a thermal swim cap. It actually covers you a little bit differently and it's designed to retain heat. Now, if you don't have one of those or you don't wanna get one, you can just wear two silicone swim caps. So that's the, the idea is to retain the heat on your body and, and put another barrier between your head and the cold, which is the water and the air. Next up, you wanna control your breathing. This is probably the most important thing when you first get in. You're gonna have this urge to gasp for air, and it's all mental at this point. You just need to control your breathing. You build adaptation to that, but you just need to get yourself under control, really fix that breathing, and then if you're swimming, you gotta get dry and get out as fast as possible. So take off the wetsuit. I'm assuming the air is gonna be pretty cold if the water is really cold. Even if you're doing a cold plunge and you're getting out, you wanna dry yourself off. You don't wanna be in that environment outside or inside and you're still wet. It's gonna make it more difficult to bring back heat back. And then you wanna make sure that you drink a warm fluid. So your body's actually gonna be dehydrated because it was working to maintain this homeostasis. If you're swimming, you're doing work. You're burning calories. And so you're gonna be sweating even if you don't feel like it in the water. So it's important not to drink any caffeine. Bundle up as much as you can. Let me know in the comments what you guys have done, whether it's ice swimming, polar plunge, cold plunge, or swimming 5K in the freezing water. If you enjoyed this video, you're gonna love this video over here where I share what happens to your body when you swim. I'll see you over there and happy swimming.